12th grade. This, in a way, in the Waldorf curriculum, is the most elusive and requires us all to work the most artistically of the four years of the curriculum. Because, as you see, we only go to ages 17 and 18. And the rest of the unfolding of the soul and the <laughs> yielding or the arriving of the I, in a certain way, is beyond our domain. And yet, since this is our time to work with the students, we do our best to orchestrate the whole senior year in such a way that as we help the teenager to weave together its soul, we are also trying to quicken the eye, to quicken what is individual and to quicken what is eternally individual and universally individual. What is eternal in the eye and what in that eye is universally in every eye in the whole world. Whereas the question of the ninth grade was what, of the tenth grade was how, the question of the eleventh grade was why, and the question of the twelfth grade in essence is who, who am I, who is your I. We could say, to continue our sort of geographic metaphor, that the gesture of the twelfth grade is to return from the long journey from the plains and through the dark forest where the soul was lost in the 11th grade. In a way, maybe we climb a mountain and we take a quick look at everything again, excuse me, and then we come home. Home to here. Home to the Green Meadow Waldorf School. Home to all of my 14 or 16 or 18 years of life. My mother and my father. This whole world, this community to which, from which I have wandered on my exchanges, my outward journeys and my inward journeys, and now with what I have wrought, the fruits from my survival of my journey and my trials, I can bring fruits to revitalize my community. The history goes back. It's in a way a review of all history through the lens of China, going back to its early stages, coming up step by step and noticing parallels with ancient Egypt, with Rome, with the Middle Ages, with the Mayan culture looking at Confucius, Lao Tse, Buddhism, and looking at both long time and present influences of China on Korea and on Japan. As the, 11, as the 12th graders are young men and women, and I must just add, beautifully composed, this, the students here, by the time they're in the 12th grade, are some of the more handsome and more beautiful individuals you will meet, perhaps definitely because of this whole orchestration of composition, which the whole curriculum is engaged in. And consequently, the, the 12th graders study the history of architecture and are reminded of the ancient Egyptian temple serving the divine pharaoh, leaving all of the people outside it, the Greek temple with its proportions, allowing its sort of proportions between heaven and earth, its openness to the outside and its interior, the Roman church with its dome reflecting the heavens, the Gothic cathedral with its thrusting upright toward the heavens, all in the name of the mother of God, the feminine influence of the divine, and right up into our present skyscrapers, which almost like the Tower of Babel reach to the heavens, and yet mysteriously enough, in a, some way, uh, in these recent ones that are all glass, it's almost as though the building itself disappears and simply reflects the sky. And of course, we have our streams in the 20th century of the organic architecture of a Gaudi, 
and even the architecture here, which has housed the becoming of our children as well as the <laughs> becoming of our teachers and parents. And the students study with architects in the city, design their own dream buildings. In evolution, they look through the evolution of all of the animal kingdom and of humanity, various understandings of evolution. The physics, in a way, also comes home to the physical world that the ninth graders anchored themselves in and looks at models for what we see and how we hear and try to, we try to understand. What, what is light? Is it wave? Is it particle? Finally, they, they, they grasp Bohr's quantum theory that, that waves and particles are complementary and yet exclusive. A little bit the way in the drawing, you can either see the ugly hag or the beautiful woman, but you can't see them both simultaneously. Or you can see the two faces looking at each other or the vase but you can't see them simultaneously. It's one or the other. This becomes a picture of a world in which we live. The mind, in terms of acoustics, how do we experience what we hear? We know about the ear, we know about the bone, we know about the cochlea, but the Mozart concerto, the bird song, where does that live? What can natural science tell us about that? the Mahler Symphony on the CD, the 12th grade chemistry also looks into the human being in the context of the whole periodic table, looks at the six elements especially, which are primary in uh, the substance of our body, carbon and hydrogen and sulfur and nitrogen and phosphorus and by looking at how they, re, they act and live in the body, for example, how does oxygen, what does it do in my body? What does it do in the world? The, the chemistry students look at Einstein's formula, E equals mc squared, trying to express the relationship between energy and matter. And as they re-grasp how much energy is in the smallest particle of matter, they become able to Imagine what a sacrifice it might be for spirit to have incarnated into matter and inhabited matter, the apparent matter. 